actor, lyric writer, singer, what have I forgotten? Dialogue. Dialogue. Dialogue writer, okay. And, I mean, so many things. So on one hand, you're doing so many things. On the other hand, you have to fend off all these beautiful women that come your way, I'm sure. And you keep asking me this. I don't, I don't know <laughs> where you keep hearing these stories from. Where would I get the time to fend off beautiful women in the middle of all of this? But that is what I'm wondering. Have you done, have, do you have a degree in time management or something? No. How do you do so many things? I, it's weird. I mean, time just kind of presents itself when the will is there to want to do it. So that's really how it happens. I, I, I don't go out of my way to make time genuinely to do anything. More often than not, it's like a decision made that this is what I want to do. And then it just kind of unfolds in that direction. Uh, now, um, I remember when we did an interview, you told me that as a child you were making up a lot of stories. And uh, I remember the famous story. It's also known as lies. It's <laughs> That's a very polite way of you saying, you have such a vivid imagination. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I really huh. love the one about where you told your class friends that you were coming to school in a helicopter. Yeah, that's right. And then they all demanded of their parents that they come by helicopter. That's true. And uh, so tell me, was this the beginning of your storytelling career? Is that where, is that the is storytelling just a natural progression to those Yeah, that, that was definitely the, the first time I realized that people are easy to fool. <laughs> Because there were kids on the bus with me, and I would say this to them. So I don't know how they could believe that I'm coming in a helicopter. But uh, no, but uh, yeah, I mean, I did have a slightly overactive imagination about about things, um, and um, yeah, that would come out in in instances like this one. And I think there were many like this. Not that I remember very clearly, but uh, I'm reminded of from people who know me when I was a kid that I was always making things up. So it's like storytelling, the natural progression from there? Is that why you are so adept as a writer? No, I, um, I, I don't know if that's really the, the case. I mean, I think it definitely is something that's come in handy, having a bit of an imagination about things. <clears throat> but um, um, I, I really didn't think about film that seriously, to be honest. Um, I was. I really enjoyed watching movies, but I never ever thought that I'd want to be making them or writing them. Um, I mean, you do have fantasies about wanting to be in a certain film, playing a certain part when you're, when you're a fan. But uh, that really was the extent of, of how far it went. Okay. Um, and it's, it's just really strange because of the threat almost of being thrown out of home, you know, that I felt I must get a job. And it just felt like the, the very natural thing for me to do, since that's my interest, right. that I should maybe do something in film. And uh, I was very interested in photography. At that time, I'd borrowed a camera and a set of lenses very generously lent to me by Baba Azmi. Um, and I used to go around and make all my friends model for me. Um, my um, work was very limited because you had to shoot on film, and it was all very expensive, yeah. you know, processing and things. Right. But. Um, Still, that, that was the medium that drew me to it, the visual side of it. And then I started working as an assistant cameraman, was the first job. And that's when I saw what the, the director does. Uh, and I felt like that's a nice thing to pursue. So that's where you wanted to be? Yeah. That's, that's how it kind so, of happened. Okay. Uh, now that you hear a script, um, you know, as an actor or as a director or as a producer, what are the different uh, points that you're looking for in it? Because I'm sure when you hear it as an actor, mm. you're hearing it very differently than when you hear it as a director. So what is the difference, let us say? Can you point that out to us? No, I think on, on both fronts, I think the, the first thing that immediately has to register is, is the story involving me and is it doing something to me emotionally? Okay. I think that's, that's very crucial. Um, you hear a lot of scripts that are very smart, you know, um, I, I, I can also, I mean, f I feel at times maybe have been guilty of, of directing one <laughs> or producing another, you know, but, uh, and that happens. You now, can you take us through the process, as it were, of a scene, um, you know, when the scene, you have this great scene, let's say, written, and then you now have to put it on uh, camera, so, uh, your celluloid, basically. So, you know, like, uh, the one the scene that really interests me is the one in Dawn 2, where uh, Shah Rukh comes in the guise of Hrithik. Hmm. Where uh, yeah, Priyanka is. Right. Can you take me to the process of how that scene evolved uh, from what was written? Is it like just written? Uh, some he comes in a disguise and then it turns out. Or how did it happen? I mean, yeah, he needed to come in a disguise. So we thought, let's have some fun with at least who he is in the film. Okay. Um, and in, in movies, it's very rare that you don't have that concept of oh, 
from the character point of view at least that oh he's become Hrithik Roshan because then you'd recognize Shah Rukh Khan yeah. you know so that doesn't exist within that world so we just said it would be nice to have someone who's also excited about the film excited about the character um, and if you remember when I started writing the first dawn I had Hrithik in mind to play that character yeah. so for me it was like a little bit of a circle that happened you know, getting him to be this character for a bit. And uh, he was very sporting and he was just like straight off the bat said, I'd love to do it. But um, I mean, yeah, Don needed to be in disguise to be able to go to this party and that's how it That's how started. it happened. Yeah. So when you're writing or when you're acting, you tend to drop off the map because you get involved in your character and you don't really want to then, you know, uh, spend time doing other stuff. Mm. Now, uh, the, I mean, we know that, sir, that about you. Now, when that happens, how long does it take you to actually withdraw from a character when it gets over? And how much does it change you as a person? And how much do you take home of that? You know, it depends on, on the part. Um, like, Rock On has had a very major influence, I think, on me. It reintroduced me to playing guitar again. It reintroduced me to wanting to sing again, so which was nice. Um, with uh, a film like Karthik, calling Karthik was a very difficult film to do. Yeah. Um, because a lot of it is um, firstly just solitary work. Uh, secondly, it's a lot of it is just reacting to voices that you're hearing um, on the phone. Um, and somehow to emote through that, I felt like that was the first time I, I really, really felt the need to dig really, really deep to come up with, with something that's, that, that could be intriguing and that could be involving for a viewer to watch. Um, so that was actually a difficult one to come out of because that was the first time I felt the need to yeah. really move away yeah. from everything and, and just kind of put this weight onto my shoulders of not having friends, sure. you know, of um, uh, kind of being disconnected from, from people, not picking up the phone and calling anyone. So when you meet them, they'll always be like, Where, why, why don't we see you anymore? Right. Um, so, it, yeah, to just work myself into a mood which was, um, for the lack of another word, I think, just, just kind of a, a self, some kind of a self-placed misery, you know, like to put myself into a miserable situation. Right. And then having like just uh, thought that that's my life and nothing can change to just feel that way. And then everything you do, in, there's no excitement in action, you know, in moving one thing. It's, it's always just very dull. Yeah. So that was quite a, that was an interesting phase. Um, and it did take some time to come out of that, um, uh, from that film. With ZMMD, I mean, it was, I felt very close to home. I think Zoya also wrote it, keeping me in mind for that part. But uh, with Milka, has been a, a, a very huge one. Okay. You know, uh, to start with, it's um, the character is someone who is who has nothing to do with city life, okay. which is a very uh, intrinsic part of who I am. Right. Uh, so to get rid of those instincts, you know, or that that street smart kind of Mumbai city vibe that we have, one is that they, he was a lot more believing of people, a lot <coughs> more trusting of people. Um, he depended on those people that he met a lot and they still are very, very close to him. Okay. You know, yeah. so those relationships that formed, even though they were maybe for a period of two years or three years and they didn't see each other mm. again, but those have really stayed with him. You know, and it still speaks about them very highly, like they're, they're still in the next, I mean, that they're still with him. Mm. Um, and apart from that, of course, the whole sporting thing yeah. that there was yeah. and the Punjabi accent and right. the athletic language and the kind of focus that you need in the eyes when you're an athlete. So that, that has stayed, I think that on some level, I mean, although I'm doing another film now, right. you know, but the, I, I still feel like re a residue of that experience, you know, is still there. So I, at times even now I have to keep correcting myself because when I'm doing a scene here and uh, sometimes just to punctuate something, I, I might say, Uttari. You know, it just comes in randomly, right. you know, and then you're like, I mean, this has nothing to do with <laughs> the guy I'm playing now. Yeah. So then I'm like, can yeah. we just maybe change that? But so that it's, it's a process, you know, for it to come up because it's also happened so back to back right. that I haven't really had a chance to move like very as organically as I would like right. between the two. Yeah, because otherwise you're like a party boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like an independent candidate. <laughs> 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 but it does take you time to come out of that and be the person that you are. You know, I'm, I find it very difficult to talk to people when I meet them for the first few times. Okay. 
um, which is why I'm not looking in this direction as you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, I, I really do. I, it takes me a while. But uh, I, I mean, once I feel that we can be on the same page, I mean, then it, then it gets, um, for me, a lot, a lot of fun to, to hang okay. out with that person. Okay. Okay. Now, the journey of a script from uh, writer to producer, usually, mm. is one that is full of heartbreaks. Yeah. And uh, as I mean, I'm sure it may, you may not have actually faced it because you produce your own film, luckily for you. But most writers face a lot of heartbreak when they have a script. Mm. Uh, as a very successful producer who's, uh, you know, worked with a lot of directors, mm. uh, how, can you suggest ways to make that easier for them? Are there ways to make it easier? I don't know. You know, the thing is that there was a script that I wrote after Dil Chata, which I'm still to make. Um, I've tried casting it every single time I finished a film um, and for some reason or the other it's never managed to take off um, and I've, I feel that with many people it's happened to Zoya she had to wait for seven years to make her film yeah. you know um, and a lot of directors who are established directors and we think that they probably have it a lot easier because they may have access to studios or to cast it's really not that simple you know uh, eventually actors I think, I mean, of course, they, they trust you more to make a film uh, with them, but uh, they still want to enjoy the story and they still want to get into the script and they still want to like their part. Right. You know, um, the fact that you're directing it probably makes it easier for them once mm. they say yes. Mm. But it, it's not that simple that you just go to someone and say, you know, I'm directing this film, so aap to karoge hi karoge. Yeah. you know, that, that doesn't happen. <laughs> so um, so I, I don't know, I mean, eventually, you have to tell yourself that is the film more important to make, you know, or is are these people more important to be in the film? Yeah. I think that's eventually the decision, yeah. you know, that you have to make. And I, I think the, the unfortunate part at times is if your script um, on the face of it is of a scale or, or the idea demands a certain execution, you know, then you're stuck with that you can't make it in a budget that's below a yeah. certain amount, yeah. so then what do you do? Yeah. You know, and this is one of those scripts. Oh, so this is what's been mm. happening with it? Yeah, so this is what's been happening with that script. So it's, it's, I don't think it's that easy. I mean, eventually you will find someone who'll, uh, who'll get into your script, but then will that give you as a director or a producer the freedom to make the way, make the film the way you kind of uh, visualize that this exactly. film should be? Yeah. Um, are you willing to make those compromises? Are you not? Then you say, okay, fine, I'll keep it for some, some other time. So this is a constant internal debate that goes on. But um, as far as, I mean, see the big choices really for a producer, uh, that a producer has to make, if there's a script and a director attached, is who's going to be cast in that film. I think yes. that's the big one. Yes. Because that will decide your budget, that will decide when you're going to start your film, True. that will decide the interest suddenly others start showing in it or not, you know. So, um, but those decisions aren't, uh, or those uh, those associations with actors are not as uh, simple, you know, for, for even established directors, they're oh, not. No. Yeah. So obviously much worse for uh, new people. No, I mean, yes and no. I think access may be tougher for someone who's new, but um, if their script is great, then, I mean, you've seen how many newcomers are making films yes, now. Yes, yes, and this You know, so actually, uh, yeah. they are making a lot of films and they're working with established actors as well. Yeah apart from doing their own concept, mm. maybe concept-heavy films. But um, access is the big issue. Like, how easy is it for you to get access? Because once you get in through that door, yeah. then your script really needs to yes. deliver well, something yeah, or not. Absolutely. You know, so, absolutely. I, so that's, I think that's the big difference sure. between somebody new yeah. and... Now, you mentioned Zoya, so I wanted to ask you, how much do you all bounce your scripts off each other? And uh, is it largely about uh, appreciating each other, or is it about uh, criticizing, or...? What is it when you're bouncing things off each other? She's a very straight shooter, you know, so uh, if ever, and I think she expects the same back. Okay. So um, when we just go back to that first question that you asked me about making up stories, when I was a kid, she was the only person who could actually tell when I was lying. <laughs> you know, she was the only person who could do it. Nobody else could, you know, so, and, and she was so straight that even when I would do something and I would lie, she would be like, you're lying, and I'd keep a poker straight face and be like, no, and she knew I'm lying. And she would go and either tell my mom that, you know, he's, he's been lying about this, you know, so, as you can imagine, I loved her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we got along like a house on fire. So, um, no, but still, uh, she, uh, yeah, she's very straight, so whatever she hears, I mean, she gives her straight, straight up feedback of what she feels. 
um, I mean, she has heard certain ideas and told me, you know, I mean, maybe this is not something that um, you should work on further because it's it's sounding like something that may have been done okay. or, okay. you know, you can possibly think of something <coughs> that's more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and with her, actually, I, I work with her more as when she's written a script and she wants me to hear it and give her my feedback. And uh, I think fortunately we can speak to each other honestly without having to, you know, like kind of get worried about stepping on anyone's toes, creatively speaking. Exactly. Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a good equation. Okay, your first film, The Fakir of Venice, right? That's the first film you acted in. Yes, that's right. Yeah? It sort of never did get a release. No, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Given the hysteria around my debut. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to it, actually. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was produced and directed by a very dear friend of mine, Anand Sorapur. Fat Fish was his company. And it was a very interesting script, and still is a very interesting story. But I really feel that if it had released when it was made, um, it would have had a very different um, influence okay. on movies. Um, because it would have been one of the first in a series of very, you know, like kind of new age movies right, you know right. that are that are being made that are that are um, non formulaic now i mean now it's easy to talk about yeah, it because yeah. like it seems to be like a part of the process right but in about 2004 2005 mm. when he made this film it was very new you know like it was really small very uh, very very moving film and based on a true incident which made it even more uh, amazing yeah. as a story yeah. but it's really yeah, it's unfortunate that it it didn't release so what I wanted to ask you was, when your debut film doesn't release, is it like when your first girlfriend cheats on you? Is the hurt as bad? No. No, no I didn't feel that at all. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I was, I mean, it is, it was very sad because we did try our best at that, at that point, while I was still involved with it, to see how it could find its way out. But, um, I, again, whether people didn't see something in it that we all were seeing, right. is, is po it's possible yeah. that that happened. Um, and then, I mean, eventually, like my life moved on, you know, yeah. I started doing other things. Right. Um, but, but no, I mean, it's not left any kind of um, bitter taste in my mouth, you know, as an experience, because I think for me to, to have worked on that film as an actor to start with, uh, to work with a director who I really like, to work with uh, Anu Kapoor, I think, who's, who's a fantastic actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I got to spend a lot of time with him. And he spoke to me a lot about acting, okay. you know, which, which helped me tremendously going forward as well. So um, there was a lot of learning in it for me. You know? So I mean, I, I focus on that right. as opposed to why didn't it release and yeah. what could have been or could not, I, who knows. You know, but, but the experience was good. Okay, you've often said that three boys in Dil Chata were amalgamation of the friends that you had at that point. Yes, absolutely. Right? So, I mean, those friends presumably have moved on in life the same 12 years that the film has been there. Mm. So, have you ever felt the need to, like, go back to them and, like, on, use them as a source material for, let's say, D DCH 12 years down the line? Maybe DCH 12? No, I mean, you know, I think, fortunately, I've, I've always had really, really close friends growing up. I think a lot of that has to do with um, the environment that Zoya and me grew up in. Okay. You know, um, and we were very dependent emotionally on our friends um, because of the situation at home, I think. Um, and which is why the, the relationship developed with a lot of my friends is like, like the, my oldest friends now, like I'd probably have known them 27 years, 28 years, okay. you know, like really long. Yeah. Um, and for me, they'll always be fodder. <laughs> for things, um, and and they know that you know yeah. because at times when something, I mean, exciting happens or funny happens or silly happens, I mean, I, I always tell them I'm making a note of this and this could come up, okay. you know, at some point. <laughs> okay. So I mean, and it's nice, you know, I mean, yeah. like if you can just get something from that. Um, but yeah, like Dil Chata was a combination of about maybe three or four of them, um, bits of myself, and actually one of them who was very very uh, influential on the Amir character. Huh. Um, is the guy who played Subodh in the movie. You know, the guy who's obsessed with time. Huh. Huh. Yeah, he, okay. he's a very okay. dear friend of mine. He lives in Dubai now. Um, so he was a very major influence for me for the Amir character. 
and since he was so involved with the characters, I said I must cast him also in the film and, <laughs> and give him a part. So DCH goes to Dubai now. DCH goes to Dubai. Ah, that, you could do that as the next. Uh, yeah, even one, Hangover's huh? been traveling all over. Yeah. Dubai. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think I'll do sequel. You're not going to do it. Did you want to play one of the boys in DCH? No, not at all. No, never. No. No. I was. I was very. I was. Um, I was dying to make that movie. I mean, that that's where I was at that point. Um, and uh, at at no point during the making of that film, there was a point when Amir did mention to me that you should play one character okay. while we were reading and stuff, and before we cast another person, of course, right. eventually. But um, I mean, there was it was never a, a choice oh, it was in my mind. I, I just wanted to make that film. But in Zindagi Na Milegi Dubai, you were very really keen on being the one of the boys of that. Yeah, in Zindagi Na Milegi Dubai, I had a very uh, uh, different kind of experience. I was like the, the ghar ki murgi, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in that. And I really wanted Zoya to make her film. That was the most important thing to me in that whole equation, was that Zoya should make her next film. Right. So when she met me for, when she told me about the script, of course, first as producers, and then when she said, I want you to do Imran's part, um, so I was very happy. I was like, of course I'll do it. She's like, but I'm going to be meeting other actors, and if somebody else says they want to do Imran's part, then would you do this other part? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, of course. You know, I'll do it. So she's like, which other part would you want to do? So I'm like, uh, then maybe I'd like to do the part that Abhay eventually Abhay did. did. Yeah. You know, I'll probably do that one. So then some conversation, few meetings later with actors. She's like, listen, I think may, you may have to end up doing that other part. <laughs> so I'm like, just cast your film and tell me which part you want to do. <laughs> I'm going to go insane. <laughs> just exactly. go on like this. But, um, well, I think it ended well at least. Yes, you know, of I course. Think. You got by Bhagwati. No, I mean, and, I mean, that was the part that I was closest to. You know, I think also because when Zoya wrote it, she did write it keeping my, I guess, because she knows me so well. You know, I mean, my love for skydiving, for poetry, for, uh, you know, just uh, for the kind of humor that this character has yeah, yeah. and things like that. So I, I felt glad to have got to play that part. Yeah. You're talking of poetry. The poetry in the film was written by your dad. Yes, it was. No? Uh, when you work with your dad, uh, considering that he's your dad, and he's like the Javed of Salim Javed, and you know all that pressure, do you do you feel any compulsion to not criticize something that he's done, or are you hesitant to criticize his work? No, you met him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know that I mean he is very open to listening to criticism. Yeah, he, he is, is actually. Yeah. You know, but um, I mean if he's convinced about something, he'll definitely find ways and means to convince you also. Okay. You know about it. <laughs> But but he's 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 a very good listener, you know. I, he does listen, and I think uh, that's what that that is what has kept him contemporary. Right. You know the fact that uh, the youngest youngest lot of filmmakers still feel comfortable to talk yes. to him, yes. go to him for advice or, or or to write songs. Right. Is because he makes them feel really comfortable. He makes them feel um, respected. Um, he doesn't come from a position that let me show you and tell you how things are done. Yeah. You know, uh, but at the same time, he's, he's very, um, if, he's, if he's convinced that he's, he's right about something, I mean, then it's, it, then it's difficult to, to, yeah. do, to, yeah. to see something differently. But, uh, but no, I've never had any issues with him, okay. you know, in terms of, of, of working issues. Working, issue. yeah. No, never. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's always been very open. Like, okay. for example, the, in Dil Chata, there was uh, Chamkile Din, Mm. in the song yeah and for the life of me I, I couldn't digest that word you know I was like chamkile is too detergent it can't be in a song you know I mean you don't think of a friendship as chamkila you know true, like, true. Um, like I was getting like that lady with the, the so, cham know, chamko yeah, that, yeah yeah so I was like please change it please change it and he was like just trust me this new word will be the USP of the song so I was like Achha, okay <laughs> and people took to it, so, yeah. <laughs> so it's learning. Right? It's a, true, true. Uh, now the one constant in your films is the excellent hair styling that is done. You know, starting from Dil Chata <laughs> to always, to your little pangri and your long hair, your ponytail and everything. Uh, why is hair so important? Is it because your wife works with hair? No, that's not, that's not the reason. I mean, I feel it has to suit what the film is. 
you know, like in Lux, I don't think there was anything that was outstanding on a, on the hair. Preeti, Preeti had a... No, but I mean, nothing like you'd be like, oh, the hair design is so spectacular okay. in this film. Because okay. I mean, it was set in a certain world that has a has a kind of look to it. Uh, with Dil Chata, we had a we had an opportunity to kind of reinvent yeah. the the young cool hairstyle because yeah. till then everybody had that you know that yeah. hair at the back yeah. over the collars which was considered cool. Um, so just to change that, and it again, it's just from what you see, you know, when when you at the, at least back of that 10, 13 years ago, when we used to go out clubbing and stuff, and you see people there. I mean, none of them had dressed like those actors and none of them had hairstyles like those actors. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder, like, who are those people talking to? Because they're not speaking to these guys, yeah, you yeah. know? So let's try and make them look a little bit closer to them so they'll also start watching these movies, you know? Um, so that's really where it where it came yeah. from. And then, I mean, similarly with, with Dawn or with ZNMD, it's, it's, it just works nicely in the film. Are you ever worried you lose your cool factor? I think about it every night before I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> no, because you spoke about the cool hair that they would have that would get the people of their age to come and see it. No, I I, I don't think about <laughs> my cool factor to start with only. So whether it will stay go, I don't know. I, I'm not. Something will happen. Okay, moving on to a more serious subject. Excel Entertainment is one of the few companies that actually pays writers. Something that is now like law, but was doing it for, for the longest. I remember, you know, when I was doing that interview with you and your dad, I remember yeah. this coming up. Now, where does that come from? Is it because you're a writer's son and you write yourself? Or is it just that that is the right way to do things? No, uh, firstly, I think we should just clarify. I think everyone pays writers. No, no, they, I mean profits from yeah, profits. Yeah, we give them a percentage, them of, percentage the of the profit of the film. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I, the thing is to go into the association and try to change it there is going to be very, very difficult. So it's just nicer to set an example and whoever wants to follow will follow. Um, but the thing is that, I mean, genuinely, I mean, that's really where the seed of your film has come from. You know, everything that's happening in this movie has emerged from this writer sitting at a writing pad or a comp and, and putting something together. Right. And for them just to get paid, I mean, I don't know, like a minimal amount vis-a-vis -vis the budget of the film at least, yeah. you know, um, and not get anything more if the film succeeds, we felt was, was a bit unfair. So uh, just between Ritesh and me, we decided to take a call that uh, whenever we uh, work with writers outside Excel, yeah. you know, so uh, I mean, like if I write a script, I don't get that extra percentage for writing because I'm already producing. Okay. But uh, anyone who's just on as a writer hmm. will, will get a percentage of, of the profit in the film. That's a good, very good example to set, actually. Now, you spoke about Bhag, Milka Bhag, uh, but I'm wondering, what was it really about it? Is it because uh, that actually inspired you to take it up? Is it because it's a biopic? Is it because you really admire the man? Did you know much about him? No, not really, him? actually. I mean, I knew about his sporting legacy. Um, and I knew that he'd won gold at Commonwealth Games, Asian Games, um, that he had broken the, the 400 meter world record and he held it for a little while. Uh, I knew all that stuff, but I didn't know anything more beyond. I didn't know anything beyond that okay. about his life. So, firstly, when Rakesh came and narrated it to me, I was I was um, surprised by his story, and um, it's very rare when you hear a story and you genuinely find yourself uh, weeping at the end of a forty-minute narration. Really? Yeah, it's okay. so moving his okay. story, and there was no reason in the world to say no you know, to it. I mean, like, even if I wanted to r wrangle my way out of it, and I, I could, there would be no reason to, yeah, yeah. to say no to it. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, to me, the, the, the most powerful thing in the film, of course, is his spirit of how he, where he comes from, and just with believing in himself and in a dream, you know, how he managed to achieve phenomenal things. Yeah, and yeah. without concern of physically, emotionally, mentally, the kind of pain he put himself through True. to be able to do it yeah. um, is, is, is learning, you know, I, th I think for many people because yeah. I also feel it's a very well-timed film. Um, because I, I somehow I, I feel people who want to achieve things are tending to rely more on shortcuts, you know, on the easier way to get there. Right. which I think manifests at times in crime, which is increasing tremendously in this country, yeah. uh, the rate of it. 
um, and I think all of it comes from not wanting to work hard to achieve something. Yeah. You know, to whether it's to work hard to buy a car, work hard, work hard to earn somebody's love. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to work at these things, and it all requires energy, it requires effort, and an honesty. Um, and so his story, I think, is very inspiring on that front. Because, because if, if, if you're willing to do that, I mean, the rewards are phenomenal. You know, and, and they last forever. I mean, people still remember his name. You know, and uh, so to me, it was, it's a very, very inspiring story for, for the young people today. Uh, there are insecurities, of course, in every career. But as an actor, you know, you stand to lose your image if, you're, uh, if your film fails. As a director, you stand to lose your career sometimes if your film doesn't do well. So which, which of these insecurities do you think are, uh, drive people more, which are more prevalent in the film industry? I, mean, I think everyone wants to succeed in whatever they do, not just in film. Um, but, I mean, the thing is, I mean, sure, depending on who you are and where you are in your career, I guess um, your reputation can take a beating if your choice of film is, is a bit strange, you know, um, or if you have a couple of films that don't work at the box office for any, yeah. whatever reason, that yeah. just people are not in the mood to watch that kind of film, um, then people start writing you off. So, I mean, insecurity, of course, is a big factor, you know, uh, because, I mean, once, really, I mean, once a kind of signal reaches you that people are not interested in watching you anymore, then, I mean, where do you go from there, at least in film? Exactly. You know, where do you go from there? Then you have yeah. to think of an alternate career for yourself, which at times people find difficult to do Absolutely. because they've invested yeah. so much into, into doing this. Yeah. Um, which is why I, I feel your choices of, of the films you, uh, that you do are very crucial because eventually if things do go wrong, um, you don't have anyone else to blame. Yeah. You know, I mean, at least you've gone down fighting in, in, on your own beliefs. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and you've done the kind of films that you felt you wanted to do as opposed to taking advice from someone and said, ye type of film kar lo because this is what will work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I just feel like as long as you can be honest about that, um, more often than not, I mean, you may not be the, the biggest draw in the box office. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But more often than not, there'll still be a certain degree of respectability attached to you yeah. if your choices are coming from an honest place. Because people, I feel, do recognize that. They do. You they know, do. Uh, when they watch your work. Um, and that will always keep you in some kind of, of stead. You know, that you, you will be able to maybe get a chance to reinvent yourself in a way that you didn't expect. Yeah. That could come along. Um, but for that, I think you have to stay true to your beliefs and, and, and to your choices. Did you want to play Dawn at any point? Were you Me? considering yourself to play Dawn? When you no, were not at all. No? Never. So all the best roles you give away. Why? That's not true. I mean, Dil Chata, hai, you didn't... See, firstly, I, I genuinely don't feel the need to direct and act at the same time. Um, I feel it's... I, I mean, people have done it amazingly successfully and I don't know how. I, I have a lot of respect for them who have managed to do it. Um, but I, I don't think I can, you know. Um, I mean, although I do many things, but I feel when I'm doing any one of those things, I want to do only that. Okay. You know, I don't want to yeah. confuse ha, ha. two of them together. And I think directing and acting, I mean, they're just, the, the demands are so, um, so different. Um, and I, I don't know if I'd be able to honestly then do one or the other. Yeah, okay. You know, I'll, I'll, my, the wires might get a bit too crossed in my brain. So, um, whenever I'm writing, I always visualize another actor playing the part. Okay. Uh, okay, we need to move on to another section, which is called Who's the Boss? Uh, remember, it'll be like a rating section. Uh, really, like, quick. Like, uh, so, I'm going to ask you to rate two of your friends, Shah Rukh Khan and Rithik Roshan, on several parameters. They're both friends of yours. You've directed both of them. You've acted with uh, Rithik. They're your buddies. Yeah, but, I mean, why would you want me to rate... My friends. Uh, I'll tell you the parameters that you should rate them on. Try it. We can always talk. Hmm? But these two. Okay. Uh, the first thing is attention to detail. One to ten. One, of course, obviously being the least, and ten, obviously being the most. Attention to detail. Yep. And all actors have a tremendous attention to detail. So the about ten? Yeah, I would say ten. The about ten. Yeah. Okay. Personal charm? Personal charm. <laughs> Compared to me or just... just no, just, <laughs> just, 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 just. <laughs> or to each other. No, no, no not right. to each other. Each one separately. Quick escape. <laughs> 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 nee, you know, I, nee, this is, it, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Why? 
ابلٹی translating instructions see the ability to translate a director's inputs um eventually can only be figured out by if the audience gets it or not you know so i think the fact that both of them are doing so well is because the audience connects with them um and i'll take a lot of credit for that since i've directed both of them so they're very good so that at again both to can. communicate my words to the audience <laughs> But see, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think this rating system is, is going to fail you with really? everyone who comes here. Yeah. Should we just go through it just for the heck of it now that we have it? Yeah, I mean, we can talk about it. I think let's stay away from numbers. Okay, fine, fine. That's fine. Okay, we won't do one to ten. We'll just talk about the two of them in, uh, in, within this uh, sort of thing. Sure. Okay, interest in stuff other than films in the wider world. Um, interest in stuff. I mean, on that level, I feel... Um, like in, in i probably have a lot more things in common in terms of things that i like do, that i like doing in in my spare time with sharuk than i do with rithik i think you know uh, so whether it's, i mean it's like in whether it's playing video games you know um, uh, reading the similar kind of books okay. as well okay. you know so that i found I, i had we had a lot of common ground in in our recreational um, things that we were doing Uh, with Ritik, I mean, of course, uh, he's he's very very, he's an encyclopedia on, on 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 the human physique, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, seriously. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. if ever I have any questions regarding anything, whether it's about an exercise or some diet thing, or you know, somebody is saying you should try this method of some new calisthenics that have started or something, he's a great guy to call, okay. you know, because he has great information and he he really reads a lot. you know about it so for me he's uh, he are really my go to guy for for that for kind of thing. stuff yeah. and he has amazing expressions as well he has, he's he's great at um rithik yeah you know i i still don't think he's done um uh, a comedy of sorts huh. you know that that justifies the humor that he has was that so yeah he he has a great sense of humor and i think somehow none of his films that i've seen um really really have captured yeah, yeah. um him as he is funny in real life you know so i think that's something that um, hopefully somebody will bring somebody out will, in yeah. him someday yeah. okay patience with fools patience with fools yeah well i mean i don't know there's only that much that anyone can have no yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know so I mean I don't know I don't know them that closely that they start telling me that I think this person's a fool or not <laughs> but uh, they, you know um but um I don't know how to answer that it's a very personal question yeah okay, for them Okay so fine so fine so we'll uh, that's enough of an answer when they obviously have enough uh, inherent coolness I mean not style and all that like mm-hmm. just basically cool people inherent coolness as you can see this is the most uncomfortable part of this <laughs> conversation yeah. you know it would be so nice if you had gone through like just one person <laughs> um one person being you nahi i mean even just anyone um just give it a try i mean i don't know if they stay up at night also thinking about whether the cool factor will be <laughs> will be will be there <laughs> as they move on in life or not I'm, i i don't think no so idea. i i don't think so i think they're pretty confident about being cool <laughs> yeah. okay. i just realized while i was trying on my my bond, my arms were tied behind my back so, so you know what i'm feeling at least mentally at this point okay should we just end it I'm here like kuch nahi janta main kuch nahi that's okay we can just end it here yeah. and take it to the audience that's Fun. perfectly Fantastic. fine <laughs> Thank you for all for taking the time out to talk with us. It was really great to hear the stories that you had. And audience, thank you so much for being a very patient audience. Thank you so much everyone.